Hello, welcome to Straw Family Farm Take Two. I'm Christy. Today in the chapel we have Psalms 2, 11, and 12. Serve the Lord with fear and rejoice with trembling. Blessed are all who take refuge in Him. So, yeah, just trying to keep my eye on the Lord. Um, so, welcome to the first sewing section, I guess. Um, I don't know if this is the first or the second. Maybe the second? I don't know. So, I'm trying a new setup. I know the light overhead isn't great, um, but we're at my table that I set up for sewing, and I've gotten quite a bit accomplished, but nothing done. Well, you have some done. Okay, so I talked to you guys first. We'll talk about these, the stockings, okay? And um, so, I added some. I did the four kids. I went to Hobby Lobby and <laughs> caught the material on sale and gave $2.09 for a half, a half yard of whatever color they wanted. And I did, these have already been turned inside out. It's real super, oh, forgot the camera moved. Um, super shiny uh, satin. Yeah. So um, it's a satin poly whatever. Okay, so I got the pink, the purple, the blue, and the red. And those are cut, separated, and because of the the shape of a stocking, I can't just buy a quarter of a yard. Um, it would have to be a fat quarter, and I could only find cotton at my local shop for fat quarters. So, yeah, I bought a half yard, and now I have enough to make each child two stockings. So, I'm thinking of maybe doing two uh, different ones. So, I got the um, fabric for $2.09 a half yard, and then I got a whole yard of this, uh, and it's silver. It's not white. Um, let's see if I can show you. Uh, I have them ready to snip. Okay, so let me turn this right side out. So, first off, this is a satin side. This is a white ticket. You take it away, it looks silver. Um, so, yeah, I think that the silver will go very well with these because it almost goes white, but then it doesn't. So, now I did pay um, full price for one half yard because it was an afterthought. So, I got all my kids' stuff and a bag of candy. <laughs> I picked up, I grabbed some Andes. I was coming from work. It was, I was hungry. Anyway, yeah, so it was um, $15.62 for the entire ticket. And that got me everything I needed and the candy. Um, then I went back and because it wasn't on sale anymore, I went last week and picked up these things. And then I went Monday and picked up a half yard of green. Or a roommate and I'm going to include roommate in what we do because I've noticed roommate doesn't have a stocking my dogs have stockings I have a stocking roommate doesn't have a stocking so we will be making roommate a green one and I paid um, now I got what else did I get um, I got two things of thread and I got some other and it was still only seven dollars so um, for less than 25 bucks, okay, I'm going to do 10 stockings, um, and half will have the top like this, and the other half will be, um, I think I'm going to put the crochet part on it. I'll explain that when I actually do them. Um, it's still kind of up in the air. So, there's all the satin for that. And I've got it all pressed, cut, not cut, but cut in fat quarters the way I need it. I have my pattern. And then I decided to set those aside. And I didn't work on my skirt. It's over here to my left, uh, or to my right, your left, whatever. And I didn't work on it at all this weekend. But I told you last week that I had a goal of getting all these bags done. 
And um, let's see if I can do this. Okay, so I, I'm using the camera in a different place and the laptop in a different place. And the camera is not attached to the laptop. It is by cable, but not so I can move the camera without. Okay, so this is the stack of the ones that I was working on. And some have come over here. These are not cut. These are cut. This one's in the progress, so I can show you something. And then that tub right there, this lovely one, has in it the ones that I finished. So, I do have finished. I've got two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, thirteen finished. And by the end of, I think there's counted it like three times, thinking I would remember. It's 53 or 54 that there is. Um, I can't exactly remember. I'm going to have to write it down. But I have to get these two right here finished. They are all pinned. The others are just, the short ones right here are just um, cut. They're not cut in. So I've got a stack here of gift bags that are um Pressed. I have a little stack that is already previously cut. I have cut and pen because I need these two this week, so I will be finishing those. Um, okay, so I talk a lot in my bag making that I use a French uh, stitch. Now, I know in sewing it's called a seam, and I was taught by my granny. So Granny was a knitter, so she called everything a stitch, okay? Because everything in knitting was a stitch. So she she just always called it all a stitch. So I call it a French stitch, but it is a French seam, all right? And I just wanted to show you, um, and I have a couple, uh, uh, one tip that's really important to me, um, just to make a cleaner product. So for a French seam, it is this right here. Okay, I don't know if you guys have ever used it. This flap right here. This is the front of the material. And that little flap is all that shows on the inside. Okay, so that is a French seam. It is super easy to accomplish. I never do it on the handles, but I always do it. it for me, most of my bags, um, that are gift bags and, and not just little cotton bags. I always use a French seam and I always like the way um, a bag looks with a different fabric on the bottom and something else on top. I don't know why, that's just my preference and that's the way I do it. Um, so, in order to do that, in most places will double stitch because that that's the bottom of the bag and you don't want it falling out. Well, the French uh, seam is mighty handy for this because all you have to do is you pin it with the wrong sides together. Okay, so I've got the wrong sides inside and then you're going to seam down this. Okay, and it's going to look like this. It's going to look, you know, you'll have your front, but you'll have your seam in the front. Then you iron this over and you fold it over. And the more you iron this and the better you iron it into place, the better it looks. Okay. So if you're not into ironing, I, I wouldn't suggest finger pressing it. You, you really need this to be pristine because once you get it done and you sew across like this, okay, then you have this beautiful French seam and the material joins flawlessly. Then you have to, we're going to pretend this other one is done. Then you have to put them wrong sides together and you have to seam up the sides. Now I don't do a French seam on the sides. I do pull these down and make sure that the flap is down. Okay, again, I iron it down before I do that. 
remember this side isn't done so we're just pretending so we put that down like so and then of course you seam the two seams some of these I have some of these I have squared the bottom some of them I don't um if I'm making things for people for a Bible bag um I tend not to, to square the bottom gift bag I might um I don't know I, I'm thinking I might but I need to get this one done because the lady that um is doing it likes blue oh no not this one this one is silver. I need to get this one done because the lady likes blue and it's a blue gift bag okay and then the other one likes crimson and cream and this is the one that I have put together for her. so um, once you get I know I kind of stopped in the middle once you get those seamed then you just hem the top and you put your handles on you know like so and I just the handles I just press them one seam turn them over remember these are surged on the sides and then um, I always put my seams to the inside you know into the handle so super simple um, remember that these are made from upholstery samples this is an upcycle super easy to do um, I have a lot of fun to do it I did set a goal and there are um, 50 some here and I broke it down to I want to do you know two a week and then I thought oh well that's just eight a month so I sat down and did those 13 in a week <laughs> so I'm ahead of schedule so I have these bags that I will be working on every week I hope um, the problem is I enjoy making them so I get carried away and that's why I didn't get anything done on the dress um, the thread that I picked up um, at Hobby Lobby is the poly clear I call it stretchy um, it's the invisible thread it's plastic poly whatever um, this is just a zoology yeah I got it for you know I don't remember it was on sale and that was some of the stuff that I picked up at Hobby Lobby when I went back and got his uh, got roommate stuff so um 99 cents a spool so I got two um but that was so that I could do the elastic in that dress I've got the wide band I've got it all uh what do you call it pinned I just haven't sewed it together because the way I want to sew it is zigzag with this so that it has stretch to it I don't use a cotton thread when I'm using elastic it's just my thing um I will take that back I use cotton thread when I'm overlapping it and I'm sewing it up and down that way it'll stretch like this but I don't use it when I'm going to put a waistband in because it needs to stretch and this has stretch to it so um yeah I didn't get to work on that because I was so busy working on this and I wasn't busy doing it I was enjoying it and that's why the stockings <laughs> only got pressed and cut because and I had big dreams I was like I'm gonna work on all three yeah I didn't um 13 bags later these pressed I have all these cut um I told you I might do them assembly line style so you knew I wasn't I just cut until I get tired of cutting I pressed all of them I didn't care I was like I just want them all pressed so I pressed all of them and that was my goal and then I thought oh well I'll just cut a few of them and then oh well I'll just sew a few of them <laughs> so I ended up most of the day Sunday um, doing this and all I got done was the stockings pressed and some bags made because I get carried away with these bags super simple you can make these with any any size at all um, you can use a French seam I tend to not do it with cotton um, and a lot of that has to do 
with, if you're making a bag with cotton, you can normally see a hint through it. So you normally end up lining it and that makes it super bulky. And that is also why I don't use it um, on the sides. If you think about it, I don't have one with two French seams done, but we'll just pretend. When I am lining this up, okay, it's going to be like this. And then when I'm lining it up, this has another French seam out here. So you line this up like so, and this part right here where you line all this up um, is super bulky. And I literally have to slow down, go over it, and then keep going. So um, I don't think if I wanted to do a French seam, then I'd have to seam this and then seam it back. And that's going to make super, super bulk right there at the join. And that is going to in, inevitably weaken the join because I've got so much bulk. So I don't do that. Now, I will tell you, I know I've kind of jumped around. This is one thing that I want to, because I do use this French seam. And I have been told several times that these bags, and I'll just grab one. Like I've had people ask me, did you buy this or did you make this? And of course I say, well, I made it. And they're like, well, it looks professional. Okay. Well, thank you. <laughs> it's nice to know that I, uh, you know, can pull this off my camera. I'm going to have to figure out how to keep this thing from going to sleep when I do this. So, um, sorry about that. I'm leaning across. Okay. So here is one that's done. Okay. And it's got just the regular seam down the side and you can see that bulk right there. Okay. So that, that gets bulky. Now the trick that I want to tell you is my sewing machine will allow you now, not all sewing machines will. And, and I get that. Um, some of the olders do, I don't know if the new ones do or not. Um, I don't know if it's a standard feature. I have an older machine and it's behind me here. And it's just always, it, it was a feature that came on it and there was good reason. So you can move the needle to the left, have it in the middle or to the right. So, and I just did that back to the right, to the left. The camera's confusing me. Anyway. I, when I'm doing a French seam, okay, at this stage right here, when I've got the wrong sides together and I put this up here, I move my needle all the way to the right, okay, and seam down there. Then when I flip this over and I go like this, I will have it either in the middle or all the way to the left, depending how much I got off. If I kept it pretty straight, I'm good. But this one is in the, uh, like this, I move it over, okay, so that it um, covers up what I did. Now, if you don't, if you try to do middle and middle, and this is why this one is unfinished, okay, is because I stopped to mend something and I forgot to flip my needle position back and you will get just every once in a while. Okay. And so I'm going to rip this out. This is why it's not done. I got this one and I had it all pressed and I got the first side done and I was like, well, shoot. Um, and it, I don't know if my camera is good enough to pick this up. Do you see that little flap right there? Okay. So that is this part coming through because I forgot to move the needle back to where it was supposed to be. I think I moved it. I had it on left and I moved it to the middle, did some mending. And then I forgot to put it back to left. So you end up with that little thing 
peering through and that's why the pressing is so important and with thicker canvas you can't see where it's at so just saying um it is what it is i'm going to rip that out and redo it so eh, it is what it is oh i have to sneeze oh sorry um but anyway I did get 13 of these done. And this one is more of a purpley. The, the purple is almost on the black side, to be honest with you, but it's cute. And so I'll just give you a gander in here. We've got a um, green bird thing. This one, I don't know why, but I just find it it's very, it's just tans and creams. Um, this one, I don't know why, but it reminds me of the sea, like sea, the seashore themes. It's just that pink and or that blue and yellow. Some of these don't exactly match, but they match good enough for a gift bag. And um, remember, I'm trying to use these up. So this is one of my favorites, to be honest with you. It's got just a little pop of color in some of the leaves every now and then. So, like that one. This is just gold and red. Gold stripes. This is blue on blue. Uh, this one turned out to be one of my favorite, too. And on the other side, it just has this pop of pink type um, whatever you call it, uh, color. Now we've got a red and yellow, or I guess you'd say gold and gold, just two shades of gold. This one is very muted tones, earth tones, whatever you want to call it. <clears throat> Got the sailor one. I have some red to do with that. And then this one turned out better than I thought, and I really kind of like it too. So, um, sorry, again, uh, going to sleep. Uh, yeah. It, it's pineapples and coconut trees because pineapples don't grow on trees, but they've got the tropical coconut trees and pineapples. And then just this really golden tan. And I think it came out cute. So I have all of those. I've got the two that I've got to get done. I did not work on the dress and I got the material for the um, stockings on sale. So I will, be continuing to work on this one to rip out um two to get done tonight i'm probably going to come home and either at lunch work on them or i hate working on them at lunch because i always feel rushed um so i will either work on them at lunch or i will work on them this evening and get them done but other than that i think that's all i have in the sewing section uh that french steam if you've never tried it Give it a try um, because all you have to do is be able to, to sew straight. You know, your machine kind of pulls it along and does that for you. So once you get it straight, it's double seamed. It's very clean looking and there is not a bag in the bunch that I would not. It's really stiff. <laughs> There's not a bag in the bunch that doesn't look amazing when it's done. Okay. So that is honestly awesome, clean, nice little stitch across there. So, uh, and it just, if something were to happen, think of this seam here between the two as double stitched. So, all right, I'm going to get off of here, fight with my camera, see if I can't figure out how to quit making it go to sleep. And maybe next week in the crochet section, it will be better. And then hopefully by the sewing section again next week, it will be perfect, right? No, it probably won't be. Anybody who's ever followed me and knows me ain't going to happen. So um, the other, the last thing that I want to put out there is that I have said when I hit 2,000 subscribers, I will um, do a giveaway. We are super close, but no cigar this week. 
The other thing that I have decided is that I am going to put out, I will talk about the giveaway in other videos. Okay, and this is just what RJ and I have learned over the years. We will talk about it in other videos, but you will be required to comment and enter on the actual video. So I will make a short clip. This is our giveaway. This is our prize. And I will probably show you now. Um, I'm going to try and include one thing that I'm sewing. Um, I don't really, I've got to go and look and I'm going to do a little research and see what makes a good sewing prize. Um, if you sew, I don't know that you want to get a sewn item as a prize. Okay. If you crochet, trust me, you just want yarn. Okay. I don't have to do anything. So for the crochet part of it, I will do yarn and maybe a pattern. I don't know, but I don't know. I want to include something because I'm definitely doing more sewing. And when I was younger, I did more sewing too than I did uh, crochet. It's just evolved over the years and now I'm back to trying to balance both of them in this new year and so and granny was awesome at balancing them I, I don't know she said the mending just always came in right at the right time she mended once a week um and that was her thing and so she sewed every week and she uh crocheted knitted she always had something by her chair um, in her older years, she got to where she'd watch a lot of TV and, you know, just kind of sit around. There was nothing she needed from the grocery store or whatever. And so she would, um, sit and knit and crochet, but she still managed to sew about once a week. She said that that was just about how much she needed to mend. So, um, yeah, we're, that's where that's at. So <clears throat> I don't know what makes it good. Uh, sewing price. So I'm going to look into that. Um, I have some ideas, but I don't know. Um, so bear with me as we figure out the sewing part of it. I've always sewn. Not a professional by any means, but I do okay. So I make my own clothes, make bags, you know. I think I do okay. So. All right, you guys, I'm off of here. I've got to go get ready for work. My clothes are in the dryer. And I will see you next week. Hopefully we'll be able to make a giveaway video by then. Talk to y'all later. Bye.